Hello and welcome Star Wars fans to this week's episode of Duel of the Ranks, a show where we debate takes so hot that they'd melt a planet with twin suns. My name's Brody and I'll be hosting this episode with my co-hosts Amanda and Christian as we attempt to discover what story is truly the best from a galaxy far, far away. And on this week's episode we're going to be discussing ranks and hot takes from star wars episode two attack of the clones by the end of this episode we'll have a definitive answer on where this piece of star wars content ranks amongst the rest and with that said let's get this show started amanda for folks who don't remember or have chosen not to remember what star wars episode two is all about give us the rundown so attack of the clones is set 10 years after the phantom menace The Republic is in the middle of the Clone Wars against the Separatists. Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi does reconnaissance to find who is behind the creation of the clones, while his Padawan, Anakin Skywalker, is sent to protect Senator Amidala on her home planet of Naboo after several failed assassination attempts. Christian, am I correct in saying this is your favorite Star Wars film? Not that you think it's your the best, but is it up there for you with like the Empire strikes back yeah it's it's probably the most rewatched one of the most rewatched films um of the star wars saga for me Mm. primarily because and i've talked about this before but it i par i borrowed star wars vhs tapes from people just to watch it anytime i could but attack the clones was the first one that i personally owned Mm. and this like that one, for all of you who remember, it had like a special intro with C-3PO and R2-D2 that would like catch you up, kind of like bonus material mm. on like what's been happening. And then at the end, past the credits, fast forward and hear the twine of the tape. There were deleted scenes uh, on Naboo and like it was just so awesome. And I rewatched that over and over and I have like the whole movie memorized, so... It holds a special place in my heart, and it's freaking cool. All right. Well, you also did rank it really high, too. <laughs> I looked at the ranking. I I'm like, got to. wow, he actually ranked this movie well. Uh, you I'll gave tell it you why. That's criminal. For 88% baby. It's not good. High. It's well, not a good movie. Think about it, though, through the le- <laughs> even through the lens of our metrics. <laughs> music. I gave it a, what, what is it, Sean? I, it was a high score for music. 4.7 cuz it's I'll give you that. You watch across it the stars. listen to it mm-hmm. across the stars even just throughout the whole film in the sounds immersive universe it is a sequel that it throws in so much lore yeah. connecting so many dots Agreed. so many characters Jango Fett to Boba Fett the clone army more of this political advancement that's actually I think a little more interesting than Phantom Menace um for characters i think we still we like get more of a dynamic between like we got the dynamic between obi and qui-gon and phantom we now find like what people wanted to see was the dynamic between obi and anakin mm-hmm. and it's quite something like it's really fun to watch it's fun to watch and like anakin is pretty stubborn and questioning him like like boy, I would have slapped him if he if he would have been my Padawan. I was like, "You, you will you learn your place, young one." And like that's seen you this new since we fell in that nest of gun dots. Yeah, it, it, it just like, <laughs> yeah, he's promising Padney we'll find out, we'll investigate, and he's like, "No, we won't." <laughs> like we're not promising that you'll do it precisely as you're instructed. You know. It's it's interesting. So I actually had someone call me yesterday, knew we were going to be talking about this movie, and said when we talked about fight scenes and stuff before, it said, I really think that you guys don't give enough credit to how good of a fight scene the battle between Count Dooku and Yoda was. Mm. And I laughed. I was like, look, <laughs> I understand Christopher Lee was an actual swordsman. Like, you know, would fence and had first time we did see a curved lightsaber and fought with that specific style. But again, like, I remember being a kid and the first thing you hear is Yoda going, <laughs> he jumps around. 
unbelievably excessive. But and that makes sense that he has a different fighting style because of his stature. Like you have to be threatening in a way that is different than a regular sized human. Yeah. I will say, sure, maybe that's not a good critically acclaimed fight, but I do remember watching that in theater and like with my friends and like it was hilarious. Like we were laughing because of him shouting and jumping and grunting around like i just thought it was funny and i enjoyed it simply for that but i loved how badass count dooku looked and just the way he spoke too and i mean he had a busy night he defeated (laughs) obi anakin and got away from yoda yeah and i want to also say hot take he is the best actor we've ever had as a villain in star wars Mm. um adam driver Ooh. I would take Christopher Lee still. Adam Driver. I mean, Christopher Lee Ian McDermott. was knighted. I don't know if that's Adam actually Driver, true. I'm pretty sure he was, though. Maybe he was Adam Driver was uh, knighted in our hearts. <laughs> he was the true. Knights of Red. <laughs> okay, I, w- I want to talk about this movie because I feel like you can't mention this movie without saying the word cringe. I knew we would get to this. The but, cringe romance. You know, I get it. I think that this movie like leans into the cringe almost like now watching it in like the post Me Too world. You know, you have sort of the um sorry. Oh, you're good. You have in the it is creepy, right? There's a line that's like, ooh, but you know, there's also some moments in the original trilogy where Han is like overstepping bounds when like hitting on Leia. And so I guess men being creepy is star Wars to, in a sense it happens in this one. Um, But I feel like even rewatching it, knowing that it's not the most brilliant acting or love story ever told, I had so much fun watching this, especially coming back from Phantom Menace, where, as you know, I ripped into it pretty hard. Mm -hmm. I think what makes this movie stand out and leave such a good impression is the story, how adventurous it is, how it's sort of a mystery in a sense where you are following Obi-Wan and as he's learning about Kamino and, and what is going on there, we're figuring it out with him. And it's kind of cool to see... Obi and Annie in separate spots, yeah. having to be on their own, and Obi having to trust Anakin to like trust his training and all of that stuff. Yeah, their stuff juxtaposed w- against each other. Right, it makes it for an entertaining watch. I th- I think it's a very entertaining to say the least, just because of everything that's thrown in there. Sure, but yeah, to get back to the romance. And watching it now as an adult, <laughs> it it's yeah. kind of like, it's like they don't even enjoy, like you watch it and like they, it's like they don't even enjoy being together kind of. Like it, Anakin's like, you're in my very soul, tormenting me. And like he talking about a scar and like all these painful attributions. And then before they go to the arena, he's like, before we die, I want you to know. I truly, deeply love you. <laughs> that made me feel uncomfortable when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right? I get it. I, I get that part. Um, yeah. I think, I for me, it's not the acting like Hayden Christensen or Natalie Portman's fault. It feels like George Lucas was just like in the actors too much and trying to like force them to to overcomplicate this or make it seem like too obvious that it felt yeah. almost like fake at some point. Well, I even heard from the actors, like there would be times where his feedback would be like, he'd come in and be like, well, um, act better. Yeah. Kind uh, of thing. Okay. And, I'll just like act harder. And it's harder when, especially this was the first movie that was pretty much solely recorded in green or blue rooms. Mm. And, I mean, think about the limitations that oh, even yeah. outstanding yeah. actors like the Christopher Lees and Ewan McGregor's had to work with in these cases. It's, you know, pretty sad. And so, looking at that, I mean, that the romance, the dialogue there, obviously, it really hurts it. And that scene 
where they're at the fireplace and you know padme's talking to him he's like i'm haunted by the kiss you should never have given me i'm like run padme this Uh, was your sign yeah this was your sign he uh slaughters all the tuscans there's another sign Mm -hmm. but like but that was a well done i thought like that wasn't cringe no that wasn't cringe also interestingly enough there's a lot of folks who give hayden christensen's uh i'm sorry anakin a lot of flack for killing all the tuscan raiders there but i don't know like if you're this ultimate jedi knight or i guess still at the time of padawan nearly a knight and you're in that situation where you see your mom barbarically just tortured for whatever reason i'm not saying that that's how most humans would react but if you're put in a position of power especially I don't know how it's I'm just saying like it's it's one of the things that's used to create him yeah. and make him look like a monster where I'm like I feel like that's almost a very human moment for Anakin. I think that worked out very well though to like show that slippery slope to the dark side like this mm. is this is a justifiable explanation as Agreed. to yeah. how we get a Vader. It's yeah. not justified like sure we're not saying like oh, he's Kill totally all justified in killing them. Yeah. <laughs> not just the men but the women yeah. and the children too. Yeah. But I loved how epic and just heavy that was. And like on his way there, he takes the speeder and those twin sons and you got the duel of the fates playing mm-hmm. in the background. Um, but yeah, I think where this movie is strong is, for me is just the lore. Like mm-hmm. I gave it a five out of five just because of all the lore and it's a bridge sequel movie. And I think when you're, I don't know, doing that well. You're answering a lot of questions, but you're still raising some. Yeah. You're paving that way for yeah. the politics and for Anakin. And you got Dexter and Dexter, Dexter's <laughs> oh, Diner, man. So oh, buddy. Terrible. So terrible. I love it. And it's, it's just the look. The CGI didn't age well. I think it did. Are you stop For it. the most part. No. Yeah. No, it didn't. Go to the battle scene, like the battle arena. You watch That's that. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Especially thinking about how much composition has to be done yeah. with that type of scene. Rewatch. But yeah, the Battle of Geonosis is Okay, that was very, a lot of fun. Very cool. A lot yeah. of fun. The first time we see so many Jedi like in one area. Yeah. Fighting. And the you t- got those animals. Yep. Is it a reek, the bull one? Yeah. That like... Oh, Reek, wow. Ackley, the spider one, and Nick Some of the, the best sound effects. Cat, Yeah, right? The sound effects. It yep. really immersed you into that. And I'm still sold Wars. that Django Fett's blasters are the coolest sounding blasters in Star Wars. They're pretty cool. Pretty cool sounding. I, I can't think of it. Off I love to, like, you really see a lot about the Jedi just even in that moment. Like, what's the dinosaur Jedi that looks like the Parasaurolophus that like oh yeah jumps in front of Django Fed and boom, boom, boom. Uh, 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 uh. dude goes straight down but yeah just jumps in front of like three or four people and Duke who didn't even have to like open up his lightsaber and <laughs> it was Fucking just awesome. it was and so he's cool winging his pistol like a gunslinger you get to see my man Kit Fisto yeah being a yeah. badass. Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I wasn't expecting oh. that. Uh, so another one, I think, and it's, I don't know why I root for him, but I do. When Django Fett gets his jet pack, like all oh, whatever, busted up by uh, the Reek, and you see uh, Mace Windu's approaching him, running at him. We all know what happens next. You actually, if you look, you like slow it down you see Django actually tries to use his jetpack to get out of that situation. There's like a little spark, a little bit of smoke, and he's not able to get away, which is what obviously leads to his untimely death. So it's so, it just makes it even sadder. Mm. Like he wasn't underestimating like his opponent in that situation. And in a normal circumstance would have lived, Mm. but it was a bummer. But But getting back to sounds of like pistols and whatnot, but like the seismic charges. Oh, yeah. Oh, like freaking awesome. I remember hearing that in theater for the first time. Holy crap. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. 
It's so and cool. And then every time subsequently after that, it's just it's just so cool and getting that world of the Camino ones. Yeah. Yeah. There's what, so much what's, mystery what's, what's, what's around the, Camino. <laughs> every time I see Christian and our uh, the Camino is Prime Lama Su. Make this Lama. way. Prime, Prime Minister Lama. of Camino. Of Camino. And whenever I see them now, like whatever show I'm watching, whatever it's Bad Batch, whatever, <laughs> I just think of Christian <laughs> doing his impression of Camino. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, man. You got it. No, I, I don't. So yeah, the the obviously the battle of genosis is like fun. The immersive universe is good. It's just so hard for me because the acting, like I get so much more taken out of this movie because of the dialogue and how certain things are carried out with the acting. Which again, I like Hayden Christensen. I think he's does a great job. But he like casually jokes about being a fascist. Oh yeah, yeah. like <laughs> what sounds if I out, kill? Sounds an awful lot like a dictator. Everybody and like. Yeah, burned the whole world down. But she and had she's plenty like, Are of you signs. Sure? And he's like, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, <laughs> if it works, she <laughs> yeah. He says she she, he, she had works. plenty of signs to know this was coming. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, just like how I feel, how I simp over Kylo Ren, Padme and I are similar in that way, where you're just like, oh, but I can fix him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then she, she needs a good woman. I will and say she just lost the will to live. Ah, uh, that's debatable. We'll, we'll debate. Yeah, I will say though, like if you're gonna dock this movie anywhere, it is kind of like it is that script, that dialogue, yeah. that like it just clunky or whatnot, or even like I mean, I l- I have the nostalgia love effect of it, but even when like Obi and Anakin at the beginning, they're like watching over or. Padme's asleep and mm-hmm. Anakin's like she didn't want me watching her over the cameras or whatnot. I know, and then right? They, he's like, I can sense everything that's yeah. going on. Yeah, and then they're talking about like, oh, politics, really? and then he's yeah. like, "Not another lecture, Obi Wan." And it was just like, yeah. <laughs> "These okay. guys are like, they're just trying to get through the, all the dialogue that George is like." Oh, make sure you say all this and this and yeah. this. And it, it's hard for me too because as a kid, I loved it. Like, I loved this movie. It was my favorite. Um, because again, all the toys and things that came out of it and watching it now, it feels like a Star Wars version of Space Jam where they just keep incorporating things. So you buy stuff later. Um, and like, we're just packaging this movie for things that'll sell and like all the beasts, like that's going to be really cool thing. Kids are going to like, and got to get adults in here too. So, Hey, they're going to have this whatever cat creature you said christian we're gonna have Nexu. make sure the Nexu cuts off part of natalie portman's outfit so we get some midriff in there get i'll get that demographic okay yeah. we're gonna get some romance scenes in here to get this demographic mm-hmm. and it just feels like this movie is paint by numbers to not only sell figures but just make a bunch of different people happy while trying to tell george lucas's overall story that he had in his head, but also doing this at the same time to meet business demands. So it's kind of weird and clunky for me in that way as well. I get that. I would say, though, from the beginning of this movie to the end of this movie, we have pushed this story Oh yeah, so far. Yeah. Like, it has progressed. Agreed. Kind of, I wouldn't say... I'd say the Phantom Menace does not progress that fast. Like that, it's there's just a like, reason why it can be chopped out of yeah, the order. There's a big side quest and like but like Attack of the Clones, it just throws in so much in there. And yeah, I really I can't think of too much else to dock it on other than the dialogue and the script per se. But I wanna take a moment to bring attention to the costumes of this. Oh, so fly, so lit. Yeah, this, like, even though I wasn't super into Star Wars as a little kid, I still was obsessed with every look that Padme had. Like, And this movie, I think out of all of them, really shines in the costume department. Yeah, Yeah, they look great, and there's, like, a utilitarian to it. Mm -hmm. And, like, I just, you... It's funny, like the action figures or whatever outfit she's wearing, you can immediately picture that scene or that mm-hmm. planet. Like you've just associated that 
Yeah. Is it is it the most practical? She sleeps with sleeves made of pearls. I don't know about that one. That's true. That's true. Not, but not like most practical, thinking of like, like her wedding outfit and even the song like Across the Stars, like I hope to incorporate that into my wedding day somehow. It's just mm. so Boom. magical. Yeah. Boom. It's a great song. Giving Star Wars nerds hope everywhere that your Star Wars <laughs> wife is out there. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's pretty legit if you do that. You know, I don't know. Like I said, I, I hear what you're saying, Christian. It does move everything forward, but in a way that feels like it's it drops a lot along the way. You know, I know that we should be looking at this as like its own individual piece, and, and we are, but I will say the first time I watched this movie, I definitely hated it. Mm. And then the more that I've watched it, the more that I've liked it, because nice. I think after the first watch, you're like, Ugh, all of those parts I hate. Well, what else is there to it? And mm -hmm. then you notice a little bit more. And then I will say that having watched all of the Clone Wars and Rebels, but mostly Clone Wars, um, knowing the characters just so much more from those backstories just makes me care about their relationships and kind of fills in the clunkiness of that dialogue because mm. I like Padme and Anakin a lot more because of what the Clone Wars develops. Interesting. It's a rough start out of any relationship, you know? You got, there are some... <laughs> you have to find you, some There wasn't rap. much of anything gotta, at the beginning of their clunky, relationship. It's you know? <laughs> it's <was> very clunky. <laughs> and uh, before we move on to, I want to bring back the, the whole costume department. Um, I was listening to an interview of Hayden Christensen talking about his hair because when it's all done up with all the ponytails and stuff like sure it looks a little weird but whatever but he always talked about when he wasn't filming and he takes the ponytails down how just imagine how weird that would look he has that one super long rat that tail braid. and he's got the back of his hair it's got like a tiny little baby mullet that when he takes that ponytail <laughs> out like just how weird yeah. that haircut would look for that movie you mean the braid wasn't a clip on no, apparently not. I would have just kept it. I, w I would like to... A lot of braids you know, they just took on and off. Maybe this will be my early hot I don't take, think so. But I think Padawan braids should be back in style. I think... What? I think Padawan braids are hot. What? I don't think they ever left. If you go yeah. to Star Wars Celebration, you'll, you'll see them everywhere. I've never been to Celebration, though. Well, you just watch it live. Yeah. All the live streams. No, I've... Haven't watched it. I know uh, we got some friends with the Star Wars, uh, the Pod Ones podcast. They're going to be going this year, so that'll be fun. They'll have to tell us how it is. Maybe one day we'll go. Yeah. And I want to see someone Photoshop there. Like clearly, it was a school picture, but then they throw in the braid over the yeah. shoulder. <laughs> the little Pad One braid. Nope, nope, not bring, into bring it. Bring Pad One braids back. I didn't know they were like a thing to bring back. I didn't know that was even started. Oh, I mean, it was it's definitely it? a thing. Where, <laughs> where Christian? Where was Dude, where was the thing? you read all the magazines what back magazines? then when the prequels are coming out? No. Style. Tiger beat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Get so. Get your man. own braid kit. <laughs> I don't think so. I I don't remember. What I do remember at that age is all the kids having highlights boys girls everyone that was the thing at that age it frosted tips frosted tips i mean i remember rat tails yeah but it's like a padawan braid is so close you just gotta move it closer to the front of your head the padawan braid is like the sophisticated rat tail it is. it's <laughs> like it's like the scotch to the beer you know the monocle <laughs> to the glasses <laughs> okay i disagree it's the sir ian mckellen of rat tails <laughs> who is the standard like like if there's sir ian mckellen who's what's the standard version of that the non-fancy sir ian mckellen tom cruise what? <laughs> that was too fast that was too fast i don't know i don't like it and i don't accept it <laughs> no shade to tom cruise you know <laughs> you just threw, you that just was said, big shade that was big shade tom rat cruise is reflect, the rat tail rat tails are a good period piece all right they oh. they reflect oh. a time in humanity and when we needed them yeah. most. <laughs> and Sir Ian McKellen <laughs> is like <laughs> is the Padawan braid man. <laughs> Let's move on. I don't know. I, this really went down a rabbit hole. I'm trying to dig I myself out. I don't want to dig out of it. I want to <laughs> double down because I love where this is going. Uh, Forget Attack of the Clones. I got it. <laughs> 
I got to know more about Rat Tales and Sir Ian McKellen versus Tom Cruise. Uh, oh. I need more time to think about it. I I I think so too. We we might need to rank positions of small braids along the head. <laughs> Low is a total back. High is Padawan braid at the at front w- of your Yeah, at you know. what point does a rat tail become, become a, a Padawan, Padawan braid, braid mm-hmm. and vice versa? Yeah. You know? And like what happens if you like grow it all the way down to like Oh, what calf? if you linked it from like the back to the front and started doing some like Oh my goodness, <laughs> start doing some Amidala stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christian, looks like That's you got a, a new new project. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, I guess uh, I guess with all that said, we should probably go into the next well, segment. We should say what it ranks at. What was first, the rank? Because we're I don't all think curious. we should. I don't think we should because I don't like. Cause I gave it a sixty-five point two percent, which I think is fair. And you were but, mad at me for Phantom Menace. Yeah, well, you gave that a forty-four <laughs> percent. Man, like, I'm not. I'm not killing this movie like that. Attack like, of the Clones is artwork man Attack okay that's horrible good. that is horrible the literally the dexter scene it is some of the worst cgi but that's okay. is when you see obi-wan most happy in his life it depends on how big you are <laughs> he also gives us Poke the death pokies. sticks moment yeah yeah you don't want to sell me death sticks you want to go home and rethink your life that. i love it when he's like where are you going master and he's like for a drink <laughs> he's like you go and find the changeling you know find zam wessel yeah, he's like, yeah. go and find her. And he's like, where are you going? For a drink. Which Obi isn't. He's totally a whiskey man. Yeah. I, uh, okay, that's cool. Well, I guess we gave it a 75.33%, which is fine. It's fair. I feel that's fair. It's a bit high for me, but that's okay. I think it's 68% is as high as I would have given it, but that's all right. Hmm. Well, with that said, it is time for the next segment of the show. Darth Vader. Don't be too proud of this podcast you've constructed. The ability to rank content is insignificant next to the power of an exceptional hot take. It's hot takes time. And Christian, you've got a take here that I don't think I'm ever really going to forget. I feel like it's just going to keep coming up for me. I I like this one. Well... Okay, so then I have two hot takes because I thought of a different one. <laughs> but yeah, Anakin should have killed Watto. Oh, upvote when yeah. he saw him here. Yeah. My my thinking for this is he finds out Watto sold his mother, and sure, there's going to be all this animosity anyway. But then when like let's say you cut to a scene, Padme is walking away, doing some shopping. And Anakin, he just takes Watto out back, just slices his head right off. Wow. It's so easy to add into the story. Because I only say that because Anakin is like so, em- he's Especially so emotional. Especially after his mother dies because of everything. Well, this would be right before, but yeah, he it would he could do it he right after. He goes there with that purpose. Yeah, 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 yeah. He'd go there after, kill him. He's just most frantic and emotional at this state. I think it works. And I think it would have even painted a more bigger picture of him sliding. It would have made his to the yeah end. that slide. It and would it make makes more it would also make sense that he would want revenge on the guy that made him and his mom slaves. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like the yeah, that guy shouldn't live. I'm gonna Roger Roger that. I'm take. gonna Roger Roger that. Thanks, take. guys. All right. I like that. Roger Roger. My, my other one. Can I say that one? Go yeah. for it. The. Uh, there's a, if you watch this movie, there's a scene when Padme is in that Jedi battle arena on Geonosis, mm-hmm. when Padme is riding that beast and it's carrying the chariot with Anakin in it, and she's like shooting, and he's deflecting and whatnot. Right there, there's that moment you watch, and you're like, that's the most badass couple in Star mm. Wars. Absolutely disagree, wow. because Han and Leia exist. Mm. Is badass the word you would use for them, though? I absolutely believe Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher alone as humans were badass. That's not the question, man. And I'm they talking bring about Han that Solo to their and characters, Leia. And they bring that to their characters. You see it in Return of the Jedi. 
as they're going in and they're on Endor together. I mean, that's not badass to me. They have I a love them as a couple. There. Yeah, I love them as a couple, but the I need a scene to prove me wrong that there's a more badass looking couple than that scene. Like when every Star Wars fan closes their eyes, they're dreaming of. Okay, what about Ray and Kylo of, in the, the the rise of or the the last Jedi? So right oh, there, you could no. That's I a better argument than your crappy one <laughs> with <laughs> Han Solo and Leia. <laughs> So I think there you might have an argument. I think though Padme and Anakin. Padme and Anakin are more officially a couple, and I agree with your take All because right. it is badass. They're like having her being like pew pew, and him but being it like, feels I'm so protecting fake. my woman. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like like taking it on together. Like it that is so that's a dream. Yeah, and he's riding something. in the middle of a battle. No one's shooting her off. Like it's so he's protecting he, her, he's, yeah, but he's like a mile behind her in that little wagon. <laughs> like, what's he gonna do? He's probably gonna it's deflect less it than on a parsec. Her. All right, <laughs> but it's, he's not deflecting nothing. He says something, and then she's like, "No, I call it aggressive negotiations." They even have like a yeah. she should have died a long joke. time ago. No, how can you say what? that about Padme? What? Because she clearly makes horrible decisions. Like, oh, we're in this bad situation. She's a politician. There's all yeah. these people shooting at us. I'm going to get on the biggest beast. That's the most easy shot in this whole arena. I'm gonna ride it. That and eventually did ver- happen. Actually, it's smart because they're more likely to hit the beast than they are to hit her because. And It'll this big old white outfit that sh- makes me shine in the sand, makes me an easy target, very visible. It's cool. I'm just saying, she 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 could have died very I'm easily. I'm not talking about the strategy of this all, man. It took me out of it. It doesn't feel <laughs> badass. It feels very like whatever. It feels it feels packaged and cartoony like a lot of the rest of this movie. So I I <laughs> I downvote. Amanda, you upvote. So, uh, all right, we you get the Roger Roger. Hey, Roger, thank Roger. you. Roger Roger. All right, well, Amanda, you've got a hot take as well. Yeah, I don't think Padme ship gets enough credit for being as cool as it is. So, I want to say that Padme ship is like one of the best ships in Milk Star Wars. Toast. You can't. You got to come, come. Go on the ledge. Is it the best? Is it the top three? Quantify it. Top three. Ooh. Ooh. Disagree. Oh, <laughs> that's no. a hot take. <laughs> Didn't get love either we way from We might have me. to rank <laughs> top ships then sometime on a future we episode. We might have to do Slave that. 1, Millennium Falcon, Imperial St- uh, Star Destroyer. I was going to say I think of some other ships that I would put in my top 3, but like her ship is really cool looking, especially like the like chrome. Yeah, the chromed out chrome dome yeah. when it's just going on a Tatooine. I love the way it looks, but I wouldn't put it in my top three. Mm. Mm. I find your lack of good takes disturbing. Disturbing, indeed. All right, well, I have a hot take here. All right, so I have a hot take here as well. Looks like this is my take. I think in this movie, we are introduced to the best character slash characters in Star Wars history. By meeting Jango Fett, we are in turn meeting all of the clones that follow. And for me, because they're all very, very similar. Yes, they have minor personality differences. Until you hit things like the Bad Batch, they're clearly, they're all very unique. But a lot of them are pretty similar uh, with, again, slight variances here or there. And for me, the clones have always been the most interesting part of Star Wars. Not it's not to say that any one of them are my favorite characters, but they add so much rich lore to Star Wars that otherwise wouldn't be there. So, yeah, they're, they're what makes Star Wars for me in the end, at least in the prequel era. My stance on, on this era of Star Wars is... I am pro the Sifo-Dyas story, mm. and mm. I want to know more about Sifo-Dyas. I think he's the one that you're more interested in than Boba Fett, or you would be. What? Because he is truly like the no. pinnacle. He is the the link between 
them all and boba fett's just like some guy that they were like okay i guess we can make a bunch of clones out of him i guess he's yes. around he's a guy. Like, Jango what Fett first off and okay whatever <laughs> no no Django's and I, as a kid who played star wars bounty hunter i know the unofficial story of how all that happened because it's not canon anymore and it's such a shame because it, it was so cool but yes Django fett super badass mandalorian and yes i said he's a mandalorian regardless of what some people online say he said it I said drop it, it people let it go <laughs> he's a mandalorian and boba fett he's the one that breaks away and is not a true mandalorian At least oh not right. he said that too i oh. said that too <laughs> i went out i went out and said it but as a guy who clearly if you're not watching the youtube channel got the lego slave one behind me the boba fett helmet he makes star wars I just disagree All of them completely. Do. All of the clones. I think, yeah, but, what you're saying, like I get what you're saying about Jango Fett. I think when you say he's the best, no. I think when you, you could say like he's most influential or most impactful or something to that degree. Because like, yeah, from this one guy, we get a plethora of characters and influence just from his DNA. The character, that's a different conversation because we're talking about, I don't know, like arc, beginning to end story and all these things. I think just from this movie, I don't know. I Because you used the word best, I disagree. But oh, I think, I think if it's you, a reach. I think if you said like influential or impactful or essential one of the then most it's not a hot take sure i gotta go out and say it all right i'll take the consequences it was a hot take i find your lack of good takes disturbing and with that said let's go into the last segment of the show force ghost charlie what time is it this is the way to trivia time Woo! all right it's trivia time question of the week what is the name of the handmaiden Padme says goodbye to? Hint, it's not the scene you're thinking of. <laughs> is it A, Corday? Is it B, Dorme? Is it C, Florme? Or is it D, Shorme? <laughs> I love those other names that you made up. <laughs> <laughs> that's good oh. so this yeah this is controversial this is cause you know yeah when you say this question I think of a scene at the beginning the bomb and the killing of Corday but it's not her I was gonna say Corday she was gonna say Corday so you go gonna, on you the gotta, record <laughs> I think you gotta stick with it <laughs> Dorme who, all right, all right. Who who's Dorme then? Dorme is the one who fears for her life. Like when she's departing, when Anakin is in his cool white poncho, and there he's leaving with Padme to go to Naboo, and her handmaid Dorme is tearing up. She's crying. Padme's like, "You'll be fine. Don't worry." And she's like, "It's not me. I'm worried about. I'm worried about you." <laughs> <laughs> and like, that's Dorme. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. I, I, I know, love that. I love this. I love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, clearly, Amanda, are you stick with <laughs> Corday after? I, I kind of feel like you. If you piggyback now, you're piggybacking. Off. Join the train. I'm, I'm, Join me. I'm on Team Christian, so Dorme right. to sleep. Yes. All right. Well, it looks like you are right. It is Dorme. I remember we had a debate over this once, Christian. I was yeah. like, oh, look, you said Corday, but it's actually Dorme. And you're like, Dor who? It was a misunderstanding. <laughs> and I just, we just laughed. I was like, yeah. I mean, he's like, well, this is clearly wrong or Padme was wrong. And I'm like, that would be really funny if Padme looked at a dying friend. <laughs> and called her like, the wrong Dorme. Time. She's like, Dorme, you're sucker. For Corday. <laughs> her you're handmaiden's sucker. like, oh, what the hell? I'll just die. <laughs> I just it's gave my life for you. Yeah. <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what do you do? Well, you don't die for Padme because I'm just not gonna get your name right. Well, anyway, 
All right. Well, hey, this was a lot of fun. Se- you know, a little over 75 points for 75% for this movie. So Attack of the Clones did pretty okay. Better than The Phantom Menace. For me, that is a sad truth. But a truth nonetheless. We ranked it. We reviewed it. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. And next week, we are going to touch on Revenge of the Sith. Is it going to beat out The Empire Strikes Back as the top Star Wars movie? Only time will tell. And if you want to follow us in the meantime, Amanda, where can people check us out? You know, you can follow us on social media. We're pretty active on Twitter and Instagram. You can check us out at duelofthereanks.com to check out our blogs, listen to previous episodes, read our um our rankings from other shows and movies and check out our store. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, with all that said, we look forward to seeing you again next week as we review and rank Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. See you then.